Kungar Lusuak in Greenland. It is summer 2009. A team of ice core researchers are preparing their cargo for the journey by Hercules plane out onto the ice sheet. It needs to be well secured so it can withstand being thrown from the plane as the plane lands on the ice. So they are on the way. They are going in to the Neem project to drill ice cores through the ice sheet. Seen from above, the ice is white and uniform. But in the ice are hidden secrets. Knowledge about the climate of the past. Knowledge that can help to predict climate changes with global warming. The researchers arrive at the Neem drilling project on the ice sheet in northwest Greenland. It is the third field season of the project. In the two previous years, they have built the entire camp and prepared for drilling the ice core through the two and a half kilometers thick ice sheet. Neem is an international project with participants from 14 countries. The project is led by the Center for Ice and Climate at the Niels Bohr Institute at the University of Copenhagen. And the field leader is Jürgen Peder Stefansson. We have uh, now installed our, our drill, which is 13 and a half meters long. And the aim is now to go down and drill down through the Greenland ice sheet two and a half kilometers down and to find out what has been happening with Greenland climate in the past. The drill is a very specialized drill developed by Danish engineers and ice core researchers. It is 13 and a half meters long and consists of two barrels inside of each other. The inner barrel rotates and drills an ice core and the chips accumulate between the two barrels. At the end, there is a drill head with three sharp blades that can cut through the ice. When the drill is assembled and ready, it is tilted straight down through a long, narrow channel. At the bottom, a hatch opens down to the borehole. It is then lowered down to the bottom of the hole, where it will continue drilling through the ice. Everything is controlled electronically from above in the control room. Here, the drill master can read the depth of the drill, the temperature of the ice, follow the pitch of the borehole, and register the pressure and strain on the drill, all through sensors in the drill. Then the drill is pulled up again. And when the drill is all the way up, it is tilted horizontally. Yeah. Now the drill is disassembled again. And then the long ice core can be pushed backwards out of the drill. The cores can be up to four meters long. Ice cores will be drilled all the way through the more than two kilometers thick ice sheet. The ice is formed from snow that remains year after year and eventually is compressed into ice. Each annual layer can tell something about the climate when the snow fell. The ice sheet is therefore a unique archive of the climate of the past. According to radar measurements, the researchers have calculated that right here, they can drill down through history, from the Industrial Age to the Stone Age, through the entire Ice Age, and deep down, they will be able to find ice from the previous warm period, called the Eemian period, between 115,000 and 130,000 years ago. We know of this warm period that it was about five degrees warmer than today in average on high latitudes and that sea levels at that time were about five meters higher than today. And that makes the Eemian a fantastic period to study because it's warmer, it was significantly warmer than today and by comparing today's warm period with the Eemian period might give us a lot of information on where we are heading with our present climate during global warming. The ice is like an archive of knowledge about the climate of the past, but it takes detective work to discover the ice's hidden knowledge. This is done through research and analysis in the laboratories connected to the drill hall. 
The underground hall is completely surrounded by ice, from below, from above, and from the sides. So there is a constant temperature of around minus 25 degrees. This has the disadvantage of being extremely cold to work down here, but it also has the big advantage that the ice cores remain frozen as they should. The long ice cores are cut in lengths of 1.65 meters. The ice cores are then cut through lengthwise several times. Half is saved as control ice cores for the future. The cut ice cores are scraped completely flat and are made ready to be examined for traces of volcanic eruptions. By running two electrodes over the ice, the electrical resistance in the core can be measured. What is being measured is the acid layers in the ice. The acid layers come from volcanic eruptions that have spewed giant clouds of sulfurous acid up into the stratosphere. We have basically three uh, main interests while looking at uh, sulfuric acid fallouts or layers in the ice. What we can do is we can go in and compare that eruption with our dating of the ice and this way we can check whether we are doing the, the dating of the ice layers in, in the right fashion. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can go in with prehistorical volcanoes and there we can help date several archaeological events that we can sort of track down and lock with our volcanic record. And lastly, uh, very large volcanic eruption, they have impact on climate. We can see this impact of large volcanic eruption as a cooling. Typically, a volcanic impact on climate would have about two to three years of duration. New people arrive at the camp, and now they are up to 34 people. Researchers, craftsmen, and there is also a cook and a doctor. He has to be there in case something happens in the isolated camp. The underground halls need to be enlarged to accommodate extra laboratories and to provide storage space for ice cores. Building in ice means to remove it, simply. Using a chainsaw, they have cut large blocks out of the hard compressed snow ice. To make it easier to get the huge quantities of heavy things up from the underground halls, they have also built a shaft for an elevator. And now that the elevator has been established, it can be used very practically to remove all of the ice blocks. They are as hard as concrete, and it is a tough job to remove all of the ice blocks. They are driven away and thrown in a pile, an ice mountain of building blocks. Saturday evening, there will be a party. It is a tradition while in the field. Polar clothing is exchanged for party clothes, and extra good food is made. The menu is sushi, deliciously prepared by the Japanese researchers participating in the project. The Welsh researchers provide the music, and there is dancing in the bright polar night, where the sun never sets during the summer months. But duty calls once again. There is much to do in the short summer before the winter sets in and it becomes impossible to work on the ice sheet. The drillers work in two shifts, from eight in the morning until midnight. The new field leader is Dr. Dale Jensen, who is also the overall leader of the entire Neem drilling project. The Neem project is a, a very high profile project and for that reason, we're actually capable of attracting the best researchers in the world to our project. There's, there's uh, researchers from 14 different nations as part of the project, but it's actually more than 50 groups, research groups that are involved in the project. And many of the researchers come to the camp, so we've actually got really a wonderful row of researchers in the camp during a field season. In the laboratories next to the drill hall, Work is in full swing studying the ice cores. A cut ice core is polished so smooth that you can look right through it like a pane of glass. And that is exactly what you need. It is placed in a scanner, which records visible features in the ice core, bit by bit. 
It is a visual mapping of the ice core, where you can clearly see the annual layers and dust layers in the ice. The light layers are spring and play witness to dry dust storms. Here, deep under the surface of the ice, is a bizarre world. While in the one room, it is minus 25 degrees and people need to have layer after layer of thick polar clothing on. And in the neighboring room, it is plus 25 degrees and people can walk around in t-shirts. It is a chemical laboratory and there is so much electronic equipment giving off heat that it can become as hot as a greenhouse. In here, Swiss, Danish and English researchers have built up an entire science fiction laboratory where they can analyze the chemical composition of the ice. A 3 by 3 centimeter long cross section of the ice core is hung up by a lead and slowly melts. The melt water flows through several hoses to sophisticated measuring instruments that can measure precisely more than 13 different chemicals that all tell about the climate of the past. Methane is a greenhouse gas and tells about biological activity and the temperature on Earth. Salt tells whether there was sea ice or open water. Ammonia indicates large events of forest fires. Sulfur are traces from volcanic eruptions and the burning of fossil fuels. Calcium comes from dust and says something about how the wind is blowing and from which direction. You can analyze the dust particles and find out whether they come from Asia, Africa or America. Oxygen isotopes tell about the temperature of the snow when it fell and was compressed into ice. Clouds consist of water molecules, an oxygen atom with two hydrogen atoms. There are two types of oxygen atoms, a common atom and a heavy atom. A common oxygen atom has eight protons and eight neutrons in the nucleus. They are the most common. The heavy oxygen atom also has eight protons, but it has 10 neutrons in the nucleus, so it is heavier. They are less common. But the warmer the cloud is, the more of the heavy water molecules in the falling precipitation. The colder the cloud is, the fewer the heavy water molecules in the precipitation. That is to say that by measuring the content of the heavy water molecules in relation to the common water molecules, you can calculate the temperature when the snow fell. The water isotopes is one of the most fundamental parameters we measure on the ice core. By measuring the, the stable water isotopes, we can reconstruct the climate of the past we can reconstruct how the temperature has been in the past and by doing that we can reconstruct how, how the climate has been back in time. A 10 by 10 centimeter piece of ice core is placed on a glass plate and attached with a few drops of water which freeze solid. A thin section of ice must be made to analyze its crystal structure. The piece of ice is approximately one centimeter thick and now she polishes it with a microtone knife until the ice block is only half a millimeter thick. She checks whether the thin, thin slice of ice is still whole. Then the thin cut slice of ice is looked at with light through a polarization filter. And the most amazing colored pictures appear. Every field is a crystal and the colors show the crystal's inclination in the ice sheet. On the top of the ice sheet, the crystals are millimeter small. But because of pressure and temperature, the crystals grow with depth. And on the bottom, an ice crystal can be up to 30 centimeters. The ice crystals are very important to measure to be able to understand the flow of the ice, to be able to model how the compression of the ice and the flow of the ice out towards the margin. Because depending on the, the inclination of the ice crystals itself, the ice can be very hard towards compression or the ice can be soft towards flow out towards the margin. And to understand the parameters we measure in the ice core, it's necessary to follow the, the development of the crystals down through the whole ice core. 
They have now been in the field for around 100 days, and the end of the season is approaching. All of the equipment has to be packed down and taken home. While everything is planned and packed, the drilling continues for a while longer. They hoped to reach down to a depth of 1,300 meters in the first year of drilling. But a week before they are to finish, they have drilled all the way down to a depth of 1,705 meters. The next day, they are down to 1,722 meters. The last day, they come down to 1,757 meters. It is a world record. Well, we've had a, a very, very successful season. And the fact that we end with a depth that gives us a world record for, for, for drilling most in one field season is just incredible. And uh, we, that ends the field season with very, very high spirits. And everyone really feels that the, the, the season has been very successful. So that's fantastic. A successful season is over. All of the valuable and irreplaceable ice cores will be packed into crates and shipped out of the camp. The ice cores are packed with snow to keep them cold during transportation. Each crate is weighed, registered and numbered. Throughout the day, crates are dragged up from the hall while the weather is good, which makes the work of packing the pallets for the Hercules plane a little easier. The ice cores will be sent to Copenhagen, where they will be stored in a giant freezer. But have the researchers calculated the right position on the ice sheet and gotten ice cores from the important Eemian period? The researchers will only know next year, when they drill down the last 800 meters of the ice sheet. Follow the researchers in the hunt for traces of the climate of the past. <laughs>